welcome back to my channel. It's going to be here. So today's video, we are at the Rock Sun. And we're going for a boat trip in Norfolk Roads with my daughter, Amber. Guys, uh, this is Norfolk Roads, and this is where we're gonna start. Ano ang nakita niyo? Ano ang mga liit na boat jan na dumadaan? So ano punta na yun sila sa tour nila for two hours. It depends. There's three hours. They can drive, or you can ride in a big boat for two hours. So yun. Have a look. It's quite nice. So see you in our tour in a few minutes. So yes, magkape muna kami bago kami pupunta uh, or mag-boat ride. So kape-kape muna. Ganda ang araw. So we sit outside. Ayan. Mag-try na naman ng boat to. Possibly sa bridge. I don't know if it's straight enough to go in. <laughs> so long. So yeah, guys, uh, we are here in the boat now, and we're gonna have two hours tour. Oh, it's saying telling him about the one that's going to get landed. So And guys, Amber, it's your first time in Norfolk Broads, didn't you? Yeah. So you can tell me later what do you think, okay? Yeah. So guys, the boat is moving now and we're going to the end. by a gentleman called John Lloyds. Now the boating tourism industry started here over 100 years ago with converted wherries, which are large historic sailing vessels originally used for transporting cargo along the Brighton villages. And they started to take passengers on cruises around the roads. The Bure is a tidal waterway that flows for approximately 25 miles further to Great Yarmouth. There it joins a large estuary called Brown Water. And here, along with all the other Broadway waterways, it flows out to sea. And we have over 125 miles of navigable river here, with the average river depth being between 10 to 12 feet deep. The boards themselves are well, only around two to five feet deep, and the reason for this will become evident when we enter our first board today. Soon on the right hand side here you'll see the Barton House Railway and the Wherry Yacht Charter Trust. Five of Norfolk's eight surviving wherries can be found under the awnings here. We have the White Moth, 
the olive ants that are rather kept here. But we also have two pleasure or passenger carrying wares kept here as well. And they're named Hartor and the Ardea. And all of these vessels were built during the early 1900s. We also have some of our youngest wildlife here on the right hand side as well. We have some goslings or baby geese. Hopefully they're tricks. Martin House Railway, however, was built in 1963 and is still owned by the gentleman who constructed it. It's occasionally open to the public and all proceeds even the the Nintendo from challenges. And it's a fully functioning energy scheme railway. The new boat service is called Superbox, taken from the train station, it dates back to 1901. And you can even have a little go at driving one of the trains. This house is nice, look at that. And so you've probably noticed already, as you move slowly through the village, the beautiful properties on either side of the river. Yeah. Now most of these roadside properties are privately owned, and the vast majority of these are occupied yeah, very nice. Around. Only a few of the smallest ones are holiday homes. And with very few exceptions, these houses are built for the timber. You see, now, that's nice. I like as that. The land here is very that safe, one. Especially oh. so by the river. So before building a house in this area, it's a very tough time in South Asia and the first of the spawn as many as you do until they find a part of the city. Now we also have a very iconic bird of the North of Courts coming up on our right hand side of the folks, as long as it stays with the trees. And it is of course a grey heron. And these birds can be found at the legendary group Heitzes, which is an old group of bird that describes something that is very tall and very thin. Now, the vast majority of properties found around here in Roxham can fetch well over £1 million on the market today. Wow. With Greenwood here coming uh, into the on right hand side, being in excess of £3 billion. Oh. Now, when you see this property, you will definitely understand. So expensive. Nice so boating lakes, small bridge, climbing foam, and it even comes with three acres of land. It's incredible, isn't it? It's almost as big as my house. <laughs> And on the left hand side here we have a quaint little property called Leisure Hour. Now this is one of the oldest properties in Roxham. Oh, when it was built in the early 1900s, it was considered something of an eyesore. Leisure Hour. But it's one of my favourites found here on this part of the river. It's also a holiday let, so you can hire it out for a week or two and watch it drive past your house every single day. Wow. What more could you possibly ask? I like that. They've also seen some more goslings to our right hand side, this time for the Aiden Beast and their goslings. So uh, keep your eyes peeled as well as we drive down the river, you might see some more. Now from one of the oldest properties in Roxham to one of the newest ones, this large white one, again on our left hand side here. Construction of this property finished in 2020. I like to have a and house like that. Plus. I can't imagine they used too much of this. Plus. Sorry, due to the, uh, the weather that we've been having recently. Money was spent. Yeah, that's a nice house. Now believe it or not, this house was built in 1980. It was built, all that used to sit on that little strip of land there on the left hand side was an old wooden run down shack. Uh -huh. So I think we can all agree that's a bit of an upgrade, isn't it? trees you'll see a property called Heronby, which I think is particularly lovely. You'll also notice it's built on stilts and there's a little cut through that runs directly it's underneath it straight into day, Roxham yes. Broad. And that means all the local wildlife can have easy access to the broad or to the village whenever they like. But unfortunately we're a bit too large to fit underneath there so uh, we'll have to take the long way around I'm afraid. Did you enjoy and as we leave like that it. last house of the village nice behind us, we've entered into into an area of where Now trees began to take over the riverbanks here when reed and sedge stopped being harvested after World War One. And this is when a lot of the country's young lads sadly did not return from the conflict. And due to this lack of labour, the trees began to take over the riverbanks again. If you'd like to see some new swans and their circuits, have a look on the left hand side very soon, giving you plenty of warning because we have just that coming up. There you are, the swans. 
always lovely to see at this time. Now, as I say, these are new swans, and like all swans in this country, they are highly protected by the king. This goes all the way back to the yeah. Tudor times when King Henry VIII was on the throne. Now, he wasn't some great big conservationist, far from it, I'm afraid. He liked to eat swans, and he was particularly partial to the big on his dinner plate. You will see a very small example of one, and there's even a smaller one just ahead of us on the left hand side as well. It's 85% of the weed that we use in this country nowadays comes from overseas, from countries such as China, Turkey, and Japan. Which I always think is a bit of a shame, because the weed that most of the in North Korea is reduced to be very much built in 1987. And that makes her uh, only one year older than that I am. But I think people will agree, she's aged a lot better than what I am. This boat is owned by the Wherry Yacht Charter Trust that we pass back in the Boxen crew, and they get to do all the hard work for you whilst you sit back and relax and enjoy the views. And as you can see, the Trust keep these boats in tip-top condition. We walked. I've hired a canoe from the waters of the station here to the left-hand side, and I can tell it's a great experience for anyone who wants to get an even closer look at the wildlife. And this would leave the land free for farmers to graze sheep and cattle. And it's called Bidler's Mill. Now, wind power was used on the boards up until the early 20th century, and this pump in particular was working until 1914. Shortly afterwards, it unfortunately caught fire. Do something this trip. I would say you've got a pretty good chance of seeing some on the left hand side when the battery stays this. Colour, obviously. But unlike all the other birds during the winter season, they lag behind in their migration. But now that